So today I wanna to show you how you can become a millionaire even on a low income, but it's not by taking $10 bills and saving money. Because by saving money, what ends up happening is once you deposit this in the bank and the government prints more, you get twice as much money that's worth half as much. So whether it's 110 or two fives, that's called inflation and it's a hidden tax on our wealth. Instead, we'll have to outpace something called the cost of capital. And the only way to do that is by investing that money into something that will make us compound interest just like this. All right, so this is amazing. So I woke up this morning, I checked my phone, and for the first time ever, my dividend stonk portfolio crossed over a million dollars. Achievement unlocked. After 18 years of working, saving, and investing, I think I figured out what it takes to become a millionaire, but it's definitely not magic tricks. Actually, that's not true. David Copperfield's a billionaire and he owns like 11 islands. So it could be magic tricks, but it's definitely not drop shipping. It's not buying random cryptocurrencies that someone on YouTube just made videos about. It's not by buying investing courses that promise you the secrets of the stock market. Instead, all it actually takes is discipline, McFly. And to prove that anyone can become a millionaire, even on a low income, a magician on a once low income is gonna show you the magic behind how anyone can do it. This is gonna be super inspirational, so let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the magic, the magic of compound interest. There's gonna be a lot more magic throughout this video, but I first wanna give you a bunch of examples of people throughout history that never got to be famous, so you've probably never heard of them before, and they worked ordinary jobs, they never made a lot of money, but they still ended up becoming multimillionaires. One of those people is a woman by the name of Grace Groner. She never married lived her whole life in this cottage, never had a car, and used her savings to make a small investment in Abbott stock. So by age 25, she gets a job. She starts working as a secretary for a pharmaceutical company called Abbott Laboratories. And in 1935, at the age of 26, she buys three shares of Abbott Laboratories for $60 a piece for a grand total of $180. Now back in 1935, $180 was worth a lot more than what it's worth today. But it wasn't worth so much money that it's unattainable by today's standards. In 1935, it was actually worth $4,077 in today's money adjusted for inflation. So it probably took her over an entire year of working and saving just to get to that amount. Now, she continues working for the next 43 years and she doesn't invest any more of her money. She just sticks with the same three stocks that she buys from Abbott Laboratories and over the next 43 years, that company sees a number of spin-offs and stock splits and whatever dividends she receives from those three stocks, she just reinvests back into the same company. Now, at the end of her life, she leaves instructions that whatever money she has left would be donated to Lake Forest College, Illinois for scholarships and students who wanted to go to pharmacy school. Now, when she passed away in 2010, here's what happened. I couldn't believe it. By the time of her death, those three shares bought at $60 each were now worth $7 million. She gave it all to Lake Forest for a foundation to allow students to study abroad. So that's pretty cool, because she never had a high paying job. She just stuck with it and just reinvested all of her dividends. Now, some people might look at her situation and say, well, that's less about skill and more about luck. After all, what are the odds that somebody would pick a stock that would survive for over 75 years and would go on to make those kind of returns? Here's another example of someone else who wasn't as good or as lucky at picking stocks but still ended up with even more money than my last example. His name is Ronald Reed. He was a gas station attendant, and after he retired, he worked as a janitor for J.C. Penney. Now, he was born in 1921, so he belonged to the generation that walked to school in the snow uphill both ways. He also worked for most of his life, and he drove a 2007 Toyota Yaris. But his one guilty pleasure in life, though, was he'd go to his local coffee shop every morning and get himself some coffee. But there was a famous story that he went to this coffee shop once, he got himself a meal, but because he was so frugal and he looked the part, the people there comped him the meal, they paid for it, because they thought he was homeless and he couldn't afford it. And that's because a lot of the money that he made, he spent on investing. Except he avoided investing his money into things like tech stocks because he said he didn't understand technology. He kept it really simple, so instead he invested his money into blue chip dividend paying stocks. He had AT&T, Bank of America, CVS, Deere, GE, General Motors, um, things you would recognize. He only uh, invested in what he knew and what 
and what paid dividends that was important to him. Now, some of his favorite things to buy, though, were names you've probably heard of. Stocks like J.M. Smucker, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, CVS, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the Dow Chemical Company. But all in all, he had about 100 stocks in his portfolio. And at the time of his passing in 2014, when he was 92 years old, his portfolio totaled over $8 million most of which was donated on his passing. Now, I think if we were all honest with ourselves, and if we saw someone in public that we knew was worth $8 million, most people would assume that person, even if they're old, is probably someone who's a CEO or had a high paying job or maybe inherited all that money from their family. But here's how the magic actually happened. All you have to do to get to $8 million is invest $300 per month for the next 65 years. Assuming the stock market does what it's done in the last century, which is return 10.5% or 8.5% when factoring inflation, you'd end up with $8.4 million. Now, out of that $8.4 million, the principal amount, in other words, the amount of money that you actually put in yourself was only $234,000, which is less than what most people will end up paying for their mortgage over their lifetime. So living below your means, plus saving, plus investing, plus time equals magic. Now, if you really wanna see what's possible with an average income and an above average mindset, a really good example of a multimillionaire you've probably never heard of is a woman by the name of Ann Scheiber. She used to work for the IRS. And if you don't know who they are, just spell it out, combine the words, and remember that your money is theirs the IRS. Now, throughout her entire career, she reportedly never got a promotion and never made more than $4,000 a year, but she still ended up with $22 million. Now, in that time, in the year 1944, which is the year that she retired, making $4,000 a year is like making $71,000 a year in today's money adjusted for inflation. Now, what's really interesting about her story is that she didn't really start investing until after she retired, but she did have three really important things going for her. Number one, she had a savings of $5,000, which is about $90,000 in today's money. Number two, she also had a pension of $3,100 or $55,000 a year in 2024 dollars, and she lived to be 101 years old. So she starts at age 51 and spends the next 50 years of investing, saving, and living frugally and way below her means. And to do that, she lives in a rent-controlled studio apartment in New York City. And by the time she passed away in 1995, she was known to wear the same exact clothing that she wore in the 1940s. I just like to think that's how fire 1940s drip was. You didn't need fast fashion. Like radiation, it stayed with you for life. Her investment strategy was more or less just like everybody else's. It was a boring blue chip dividend stock strategy of buying and holding, and over 50 years, her portfolio ends up becoming worth more than $22 million. Now, sometimes though, her story gets exaggerated and then people debate with each other about whether she was actually good at investing and picking stocks, or there was just a long time that happened and she just had time and compound interest on her side. The truth though is probably somewhere in the middle because records dating back to 1936, which is eight years before she retired, showed that she had a dividend income of $900 per year in 1936. Now, $900 a year, assuming that she was getting paid the average dividend yield in the stock market in that time, that means she would have had a portfolio of roughly $21,000. That's assuming a yield of about 4.3%, which was accurate for its time. Now, $21,000 in 1936, is like having $475,000 in today's money. And that is objectively a lot of money. But if you look online at these financial independence forums and people that are chasing early retirement, having $475,000 across all of your accounts like 401ks and IRAs is not unheard of by the age of 43. It's not normal, but it's definitely within the realm of possibility of what someone can do by today's standards if they were super focused like Ann Scheiber was. Now, for $21,000 though, to turn into $22 million, assuming her $900 a year dividend was reinvested and growing at a 4% per year rate, her portfolio return would have had to be something like 14% per year. And that's definitely higher than the S&P 500, so whatever she was doing was definitely working. But even if we assume a more modest return of 8.5% per year, she would have still ended up with millions of dollars. 
So mostly, the strategy was live below your means, save your money, invest it, buy and hold for a really long time. Now, the most interesting thing about all these people and their fortunes, besides the fact that they were almost eccentric in the way that they saved their money and lived below their means and lived for a really long time and they preferred investing into blue chip dividend paying stocks, all of that aside, what you probably didn't notice throughout watching this entire video is that all of these people made most of their money in the last few years of their investment journeys. So let me give you an example. This is why most people don't get the magic of compound interest because compound interest takes time. And the more time passes, the more we're misdirected. So take for example, this penny. It's not actually a penny, it's a silver dollar, but I'm calling it a penny. So I put it in this hand and you think it's here, but actually it's on your shoulder, check. You're like, that would have been crazy. You'd be freaking out right now. It's actually on my shoulder. Do this for a friend and just put it on their shoulder, be like, hey, check out this video, then fast forward to this part, and then they're gonna lose it. Not magician's advice. Anyway, magic tricks aside, most people only focus on the short term because they don't see any progress for 75% of their lives. It's that last 25% though, where they'll see 75% of all the progress. Like take for example, that penny that doubles every day. It's back on your shoulder. Just kidding, it's back on mine. How he do that. So if a penny doubled every day, it doesn't even get to a dollar until its eighth day. And at day 15, which is already halfway through its journey, that penny is only worth $163, which is less than 0.1%. It doesn't even start to climb until day 24 when it reaches 83,000. And in just four days, that 83,000 is worth over a million dollars. So from 83,000 to a million took us only four days, but it gets crazier. After it reaches a million on day 28, look at what happens on day 30. Just two days later, and that 1 million turns into 5.3 million. At day 28, 94% of that penny's life is over. And the last two days, which is only 6%, is where it makes 75% of its entire value. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Andre, but you can't actually double pennies. And you don't know that. I can double pennies, check this out. You take a penny and you first have to turn it into a poker chip, you double that, you turn that into the casino, and then you double your money. But uh, I just don't wanna do that, because uh, what do you think I am, Scrooge McDuck? I can't fit $5.3 million worth of pennies at my house. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? The point is that investments do double, but not in a day. They double in about seven to 10 years, and that's because the rule of 72. So for the stock market, assuming a 10% return, which is historically what it has done per year, you take 10 divided into 72 to get 7.2, which is how you know it takes 7.2 years to double your money investing in the stock market. Now, if you're still confused, just press the J button on your keyboard to go back 10 seconds and you'll watch it all again. The point is, you probably didn't learn anything useful in this video except for that, but, investing on a low income works the exact same way, and here's how. Arguably the most famous example of everything I just showed you in compound interest is Warren Buffett. Because even though he's worth $135 billion as of 2024, most of his money, over 99% of it was made after he turned 50. In fact, he didn't even become a billionaire until after he turned 56 years young. But let me use a more relatable example of what I think you could eventually become, which is a millionaire. Check this out. If you start at zero and you invest $625 a month or seven and a half thousand a year, by year 26, you will reach $600,000. But if you continue investing for just another six more years, you'll become a millionaire. So think about that for just a second. It took 26 years to reach 600,000 and only six more years to go the full million. And what took you 32 years to become a millionaire will now only take you eight more to do again. And now you're at two million at year 40. And what took you 40 years to build to get to $2 million will take you just another 10 to get to over 4 million. And that's how all of these very extraordinary people were able to become multimillionaires. It's not because they were expert stock pickers or because they were born in a time that'll never happen again. It's not because they bought my course down below which doesn't exist, it's because they focused their eyes on the prize and they weren't misdirected by time. That's how they enjoyed the magic of compound interest, which is pretty cool. But also I do reserve the right to sell a course someday. But it is not this day. And studies show that compound interest means if you smash the like button and subscribe, I'm gonna live long and prosper. Sorry about that. 
I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stonks. Links are down below. And then go track them automatically with a spreadsheet link down below on my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.